Welcome to Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo, presented by LA's First Choice Auto Auction on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. It's your chance to hear directly from the head of Lion Football. Now, live from Topola Catering in downtown Hammond, here's Alan Waddell. Good evening and line up. I'm not Alan Waddell. I'm Robbie Rhodes sitting in for Alan this week as we're here for another edition of Inside Southeastern Football with head coach Frank Selfo. Glad you're with us here on a gorgeous Monday night here in Hammond, Louisiana. We are at Toe Block Catering, our host. Show presented this week, as always, by our friends at Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction. And we got a great show packed in here today for one hour. Glad you're with us here. Uh, whether you're listening all along the radio stations at the Lions Radio Network or our new Southeastern Sports Network through YouTube channel, uh, watching the show live on there as well. Glad, uh, glad you're with us here. I'm glad to be with you here tonight. As the Lions, uh, kind of a unique situation, didn't have a game this past week. The uh, game was canceled against Bethune-Cookman uh, with that uh, school being in Daytona Beach, Florida, and the implications of Hurricane Dorian. Uh, that game was canceled early last week, and I know Allen and Coach Self will hit on that last week a little bit because the show was on Tuesday. So uh, no game to talk about. We're going to talk with Coach about, you know, what the team did with this unique situation with no game this past weekend. And also we'll kind of start diving into Ole, Ole Miss, the Rebels, this weekend, or the Lions opponent in Oxford, Mississippi. We'll also have some special guests. Coach Michael Spurlock will be here, our wide receiver coach for South Eastern, and also a special guest tonight as well, Coach Self, something that really means a lot to him. He'll have a chance to speak with our guests tonight about that cool thing going on for Southeast Athletics for the rest of the season. So a lot to talk about here in this in the show today. We'll go ahead and take its first time out of the show. We'll come back here to Topla here with uh, Inside Southeast Football with Frank Selfo brought to you our, by our friends at Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction from Topla on the Southeastern Lions Radio Network. What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools, for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar, so more are earning degrees, creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds, and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete. And welcome back to Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo here from Topla Catering on a Monday night in Hammond, America. It's brought to you by our friends at Louisiana, the First Choice Auto Auction. And so happy to be welcoming our head football coach of the Southeastern Lions, Coach Frank Selfo. Coach, perfect weekend. Uh, Outside of not no, playing, no way. chance to play. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> no, we got a chance to watch a lot of football. Uh, we caught up a little bit. And, uh, you know, you normally don't have back-to-back -back Saturdays off. It's never happened to me Yeah. in the last 25 years, I guess. So, 
having a couple of days, a couple of weekends off is uh, you get a chance to watch some other games. And what's good is that you educate yourself basically on what other people are doing. And that's why, you know, I told the team the other day what we did against Jacksonville State as far as the pre-snap penalties and taking care of the football and those things, we saw a lot of those problems and those issues in other games. So I felt good about that with our guys. And obviously we've got to grow and build on it and everything else. But uh, for us to be able to do that in the opening game, we've got to carry it on the week two which happens to be this week against Ole Miss. Coach, uh, just take us through the week. It was a unique week. And, you know, what was your – when you first heard of the game not being played, uh, what was your initial thought about what you wanted to do with the team and how did that transpire and what actually happened with your group? Uh, yeah, well, you, it, it's – and we talked to them in reference to what they can identify with, which is a, something happens during the course of a game and you got to go to the next play. It could be good or bad. And you have to go to the next play. Well – to do that, you got to forget about what happened. You want to remember it, but then you have to have a plan moving forward. So as soon as the game was canceled, they announced it, uh, Bethune announced that they were canceling the game, then we started moving forward. What's the next best thing for us to do? And we sat out as a staff, and we met for a couple of hours and started lining out what we needed to do for a plan for the rest of the week and then going into the Ole Miss week so in preparation. So we basically went back to fundamentals. We wanted to go back to – Spent a lot of time with some guys that maybe didn't play a lot against Jacksonville State, but we see them uh, improving through camp. And those guys are the ones that are going to be moving into backup positions and possibly even pushing for a starting spot, especially a lot of the freshmen. You know, right, we brought in 23 freshmen this year, and it takes time for those guys to grow up in some instances, most of them really. So we use those guys. Those guys got a lot of reps this week. And uh, because of that, we, we improved. We got better as a football team. We emphasized the things that we were emphasizing early in camp. We went back to that without the game plan portion. We didn't have to prepare for Ole Miss. There wasn't any uh, offense, defense. We played against each other. It was good on good. So we, we, there was a lot of value in what we were doing for our growth later on in the season. So I was, I, was, I was really pleased with the work ethic of our kids. And then on Thursday, we started with Ole Miss. We introduced Ole Miss and uh, used the Memphis game and then brought them back in on Sunday yesterday and uh, used the Arkansas game and combined those two along with what we had in the past in our film study over the summer. Coach, you take a look at your week. Uh, a lot of people, in, you know, and this may be just coach speak, but they say a, you know, a lot of teams get better from week one to week two. So did you see a, a vast improvement as the week went on last week about guys who saw that video or in a game live and then maybe took it to practice at the end of the week as the week transpired about, hey, you know, he's getting that better or he's, yeah, he's doing we, that a little better. Yeah, we did. I, I think we saw a much more professional approach out there on the field. It wasn't uh, – you know, a lot of times when you have an open date week, the guys don't take it as serious because they know there's not a game at the end of that week. And that's with, that comes with growth and maturity. Well, I didn't see that. I saw a lot of hardworking guys out there. So I was really pleased with that from that standpoint where – uh, they were able to step up. They were able to go play. They were able to go focus in on the practice at hand, whatever we were doing at that time, without worrying about a game at the end of the tunnel. So, you know, a lot of times you feel like they're practicing just so they can play. Well, that's not what you want. You want to go ahead and go through that process of preparing, getting ready to practice, practicing, and then building on it the next day and learning and grow from it without the game at the end of the week. And that's, when, that's what, to me, is where you can recognize growth and maturity. You know, Alan talked about this a little bit last week, Coach, but where did you see the, 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 the most surprising group for you when you said, man, I'm a little, I'm a little kind of question marks about this group of my, of my defense or my offense going into that Jacksonville State game, and after you got a chance to watch the video and after you got a chance to watch this week's practice, whose group is saying, man, these guys are, are doing a little bit better than maybe I anticipated them to be? Yeah, I thought the line of scrimmage was where we improved the most over last season. I was happy with, you know, again, it's, it's not giving up sacks. It's not putting our quarterbacks in a position where – uh, you know, they're getting hit and they're getting uh, affected. And then on the other side of the ball, it's getting those sacks and affecting the quarterback and pushing them out of the pocket. You know, uh, Jacksonville State had a good – they had a good win this week against uh, – I'm not sure, I think Tennessee Ch Martin maybe. Yeah, uh, Chattanooga. Tennessee, Chattanooga. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that was a big win for them. And it really played well, but it kind of shows you how we affected those guys. So, I think on the line of scrimmage, we've become much more aggressive. Uh, we're playing faster. We're playing more motivated. I think our guys are doing a better job on the line of scrimmage. So that's the part. Where if we're going to win and lose football games, it's going to be right down there in the, in the uh, trenches. Coach, as you, as you go into this week, uh, how did you approach the weekend with the team? I know they, they got the day off Saturday. And how this week will just be a normal game week, I'm sure, a day off today and start practicing again tomorrow. No, we, we, we practiced today. Okay. So what, okay. we'll do, what we did was that uh, basically got a week ahead. So today was a Tuesday's practice. 
tomorrow be a Wednesday, Wednesday be a Thursday, Thursday be a Friday practice, and then Friday, Friday on Friday we'll have another Friday practice. Gotcha. So it's allow us to get in the work, get some extra reps in, but also keep the legs underneath them, you know, especially early in the season in a 12-game season. So we got it a, week, a day ahead of time since we got the film in, watched Arkansas and Ole Miss, put it all together, and then formulated a game plan, which we felt pretty good about going into the game. So – uh, installed everything today and got going with it. We'll uh, we'll dive more into the Rebels as we go through the show tonight. But, Coach, you were idle this week and actually improved in the polls. You were getting <laughs> votes in the coaches' poll last week. And you're the idle ranked, lines move yeah, up, there huh? There you go. You're actually ranked 24th. Oh, I, I'd rather just play it, play our way up from no here doubt, on out. How no about doubt. that? You're ranked 23rd in the stats poll, which is the writers and, and SIDs and things like that. The coaches' poll, you moved in 24. So that's just showing the national recognition that you get for – uh, for, for beating a team like Jacksonville State, not just beating them, but dominating them. Uh, talk about, you know, that national stage about, hey, this is you know, that respect you guys are getting, obviously, and what that means for your kids and how hard they work and what they put into, you know, getting that big double. Yeah, you know, we don't want to be the, the one-hit wonder. You know, we want – this is a this is a long process. And as we go through it to make sure that what we're doing is the right things, which I believe we are, and then it's going to show over the long haul. We want consistency. So – Playing well one week and really playing poor the next week. That's why last week's game, even though we didn't play, it was important for us. This week's game is very important. It's the most important game of the year because it's the next one. But uh, we, we, we want to play well. We want to build on what we've done so that we can, we can be a model of consistency like a program, Jacksonville State or North Dakota State or James Madison. When you talk about national teams and guys who are there every, year in and year out, those are the teams that keep continually get mentioned. And I want to be in that conversation with those guys. Coach, as you, as you dive into that unique weekend, you talked about how weird it was. You hadn't coached the game on two Saturdays in a row, and I yeah. can't remember how long. But did you get a chance to watch any of the league games or follow up on them, or is it mostly just worried about you guys' business and what's going on with Southeastern football as you prepare for Ole Miss? No, we follow the league. You know, we, I follow the league every week. Uh, if somebody say they don't, they don't keep up with the guys in their conference. I, I'm not <laughs> saying they're lying because I don't call anybody liars, but I don't think they're telling the truth. So – uh, I watch them. I keep up with them because I want to know how those guys are doing. And we get injury reports. We find, you know, get statistics on them. And you want to see how teams are trending. And you, and you do. You keep up with that so that you can find out how guys are trending up, teams are trending down, and uh, kind of give you an idea as you approach them. You don't put any stock into them until the week you play them, but you want to keep up and be informed about them so that at, when you get to that point when you do play them, you got a lot more information to draw from instead of just what you have that week. You build a basically build a library on them right. as you go through. Coach, uh, I know it was a unique week. We'll put it behind us. We'll go ahead and take a timeout. We're going to come back and start diving into the Ole Miss Rebels uh, game that is going to be a 3 o'clock kickoff on Saturday in Oxford, Mississippi. We'll come back to Topla Catering here for more of Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Self. It's brought to you by our friends at Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction on the Southeastern Lions Radio Network. Before the house, before the office, the late nights and new bosses. Before the last hugs, the wins, and the losses. Before building the team, before building yourself. The rise and grinds, all day, every day. Before the letter, before the dream, there was a kid who loved to play. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. What opportunity has Southeastern provided you that you will forever be thankful for? Southeastern has given me the education I need for my future. Whether or not I go pro, I know I'm going to be successful. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are
Hey, and welcome back to Inside Southeastern Football with head coach Frank Selfa. Brought to you by our friends at Louisiana. Louisiana's first choice auto auction. We're live here at Topla catering here in Hammond, Louisiana for another great show. Whether you're listening all along the Lions Radio Network or watching the Southeastern Sports YouTube channel, glad to have you with us here for another great show tonight. This is show two of the 2019 season. Coaches, we're already kind of flying along here. It's yeah. amazing how fast things roll. Kind of good, right? Yeah, let's go. Well, no, if you like football, you want to slow down a little bit, right? No, it's not going to slow down. No, it's I've not going to slow down. I've been trying to turn back the clock for a while, Rob. You'll That's figure it, it out. Yeah, yeah we'll it figure it out. just keeps on going. Coach, the Ole Miss Rebels welcome the Lions in this week. It's a 3 o'clock kickoff on Saturday at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. Last week, the uh, Rebels got their first win of the year. They played the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks at home. And pretty impressive second half for them. They were down. They were leading 7-3 at halftime and ended up going on to win 31-17. Uh, pretty dominating second half. I know you've broken them down now, both sides of the football. This is a, a, a team that – you know, did have some probation issues, so they're just playing hard for 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 this season, and they're really showing a lot of young players with a lot of a, a lot of fire and and a, and a will to win. And they showed that in the second half against Arkansas. What are you seeing from them this this week so far? Yeah, they're a talented football team, right? I don't think the because they got in trouble or something that all the guys left. They still got a lot of guys there. They got some first round picks on their roster. Uh, they're a very talented football team that's going to play well. They're at home. Uh, Arkansas was a must win for them as opening SEC play. They needed to win. They slipped up a little bit against a good Memphis team. Now that's – and I think a lot of people are going to soon realize as the season goes on, Memphis is a really good football team. So it's not a – that wasn't a big upset. In fact, uh, Memphis was favored in the game. Yeah. Uh, so that wasn't an upset or any, of, of any sort. So uh, I think what you'll see is them give us – they'll give us their best shot. They're going to play well. Both coordinators are former head coaches. Mike McIntyre is at Colorado. Rich Rodriguez is at Arizona. Um, those guys bring a wealth of experience to the to the table. Uh, I, I think that uh, Matt Luke, the head coach here at Ole Miss, is one of the finest guys in our profession. So, really good friend of mine. L- looking forward to going in there and playing them, Coach. Kind of diving into that a little bit, uh, Rich Rodriguez, uh, the offensive coordinator guy you have some history with with your time going back to Tulane. And you know, he changed college football, and he's still trying to change college football now uh, from being a head coach to this offensive coordinator. What are his tendencies, and, and what do you know him to do so well on the offensive side of the football? Yeah, I think what Rich always did a great job of was the discipline within the offense and running it. He's, it was an up-tempo uh, back in 97 when he brought it to Tulane, and we put it in, and uh, – we got rolling right after that, you know, had some great years. Well, he's taken that, and that's kind of – everybody's kind of studied what he's doing. And he likes to be an up-tempo guy. So you'll see those guys really going fast, especially after a first down. Uh, you'll see those guys running to the line of scrimmage, getting lined up. So we're prepping our guys on that. After a big play, they'll run to the line of scrimmage, get lined up, snap it again. We're prepping our guys on that. So there'll be a lot of up-tempo stuff that – if you got to go to the bathroom, I'd wait till there's a punt <laughs> or a halftime because you're gonna miss, you could miss three, four, five plays in a row with this guy. Uh, that's just what that's that's just what he does. He likes to do it. He likes to run a lot of plays. He likes to run the football. Uh, and when I say that, he wants he wants he'd love to have a lot of rushing yardage, and then supplement that with the pass. But he has no problem throwing it 50 times a game either. So he's gonna, you know, we feel like he'll try to establish some stuff. He wants to score quickly, so he'll take some shots early in the game early in the downs on his side of the field. He, does he have some tendencies? Yeah, he, he'll pull out auto stops, do whatever he's got to do to score a touchdown. And, you know, I've always respected the fact that he's been able to make what he's done work everywhere he's been, you know. And uh, the people have always liked him. He's done it. The, the players, he's a, he's a player's coach, and those guys have always liked him. Coach McIntyre, on the other hand, they've got it. He did a good job at Colorado. Uh, uh, fell in tough times right there at the end. But defensively, that's what his forte is. They've always played good football. And I think that's the biggest difference from 18 to 19. When we studied the 18 film of Ole Miss, uh, we, we saw those guys in a different scheme, but we saw them play it at a different pace too. I think versus Memphis and really versus Arkansas, we saw an intensity level that wasn't, that wasn't there in 18. Not, not for the whole game. You saw it every now and then. But for the, for the entire game, that's what you're seeing this year. So – us to be able to match your intensity level is going to be quite a challenge for us because that's what I think he's brought to the table. He's brought those guys really playing at a high level. I mean, it wasn't too long ago his Colorado team was in the Pac-12 championship game. That's so right. really yeah. impressive uh, pedigree that, that the two coordinators Coach Luke brought in this year to run this team. Uh, you know, you think about Memphis, you went back to that game. You think about Memphis over the last five, ten years, it's been high-powered offense. And when I, I kind of – 
flip back and forth of that game a little bit and to hold them down offensively the way that they, they did, it showed me how good that Ole Miss defense is, and I think it's showing on tape to you guys in the early part yeah, of the Yeah, it is. You know, and they shut down, you know, Arkansas, I think it was 31-17, yes, right? Yeah. Well, seven, the last seven points was late in the game, you know, right? There's garbage time. Yeah. So uh, they actually shut down a good football team. And the other so, touchdown was a, a strip fumble. Yeah, exactly, zone, pick up so. fumble. That's right. So really didn't give up any touchdowns yeah. on, on their defense. And those guys are good. Their front, their front seven guys are probably as good as we're going to see this year. And, uh, you know, it's going to be quite a challenge for our guys on the line of scrimmage. Same thing on the other side of the football. But that's what I just said, that, that I think our line of scrimmage play is much better. It's much more solid. So I'm looking to see how our guys react in that atmosphere. Look, here's what I want. We have a great atmosphere. It's, it's, the stadium's filled up. Uh, they're going nuts. It's a great game. And we perform. And we can take that experience. So we get into the playoffs, and we're in the same type atmosphere. High level of intensity crowd on the road, all of those things, and we can refer back to this Ole Miss game and say, look, we were here before. We can use this now. Let's move forward. We can play in this environment. We can be successful in this environment. We've been there before. Let's do it. Yeah, so. Take a look at it. You know, it's something that has to happen at this level of football. You have to play that FBS game usually every year. and yeah. you, you pull from it what you can, and that, that atmosphere is, is everything. I know you talked about that after going to Tiger Stadium last year and being in that environment. And If you can play here, you can play anywhere. Yeah. And it's the same thing here at Vaughn Hemingway. This and we do. You know, you want to make sure the pre-snap penalties, we get them out because right. that's the mental focus. That's the focus. When those things start happening, it's either fatigue or you're diverted from some other, some other area. Well, we don't want it to come from the stands. We don't want that to happen early in the game. We don't want those things to take place. So just stay locked into what we're doing, and uh, we'll be fine. We'll be okay and take care of the football. You've had some trips. You've coached in Vaughn Hemingway before against yeah, the yeah, Rebels. It's a, so good, it's good a, games over there. A good stadium, a good venue. The Lions played the Rebels in 2009 and lost that tough one at the time. Rebels were ranked in the top five in the country. They had Jevin Sneed, they had uh, Greg Hardy, a lot of players that Pretty went on guys. to the NFL. Yeah. yeah. And and it was, a, it was a tough game. And so the Lions will return there uh, uh, this weekend, and it's going to be – the atmosphere you always expect in these FBS games. But, you know, I, I think – and you tell me if I'm wrong here. I think it's that initial blow. To, you know, how do you survive that initial uh, blow that they try to put on you to get their crowd into it and yeah, get their team it, rolling? it is. When you come out, the anxiety, the heightened level yeah. of uh, intensity and all, just keep your guys. You don't have to play any harder. You're not going to play. Just do what you're supposed to do. Trust your preparation, and everything will go through it. We got a couple of guys. Chase yeah, I was going to say. Chase was at Fresno State. They played Ole Miss. He threw a couple of touchdowns against him when he was a freshman. When Cole Kelly was at Arkansas, he played Ole Miss, threw a couple of touchdowns against him. In fact, he was SEC freshman of the week. Right. So we got a couple of guys that played, so they're able to share their experiences with our guys of what you're going to see when you walk in the – uh, Vaught Hemingway Stadium, you know, and play on that field. So it's good. It's a good experience for our guys. Yeah, Coach, uh, quickly, anybody that we really didn't see a whole lot of in the, in the first game that with this extra week of practice, maybe that maybe was dinged up or just trying to get a feel for the offense or defense, a newcomer, maybe a younger player that we might see more of as we kind of dive into this game three? Uh, game probably, two, you know, probably not. There might be some guys getting some more snaps. I think Patch Johnson's going to get some more uh, snaps. Mm -hmm. Uh, Skeeter's going to get a few more snaps in the secondary, so there might be a couple more guys there to kind of, you know, you don't want to take 60, 70 snaps every game. You'd like to give some guys a break. So we'll get some more guys to help create some depth. Alex Huzar might be a guy that will play a little bit more if we've got a chance to get him in there. Uh, Alexis Ramos, he'll play a little bit more. We've got a chance to get him in there. So there will be some more rotations to make sure that it's going to be a hot day. It's going to be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So we've got to be able to rotate guys in there and it create some depth. So you'll see some guys take some extra snaps, but uh, nothing's popped up where you say, oh, wow, this guy's jumping into the starting lineup. They're going to run a redshirt freshman out there this year, or this week for this game. You saw him grow up, at least I did, watching the two games from the yeah. Memphis game to the, the game against Arkansas, especially in the second half as maybe the light turned on Came a little on bit for him. him. Yeah, right, and right. that's what you get with a freshman or a redshirt freshman getting his first snaps. Uh, what's he doing that's uh, making this Coach Rodriguez office so, offense so lethal? Well, he's, he's what Rich likes. He likes a guy that's mobile, uh, throws well on the run. In fact, I think this guy – Probably does a better job out of the pocket, on the move. He keeps his eyes down the field. Uh, he does a good job seeing the field when he gets out of there. Uh, it's almost like you want him to stay in there and throw it. But they got some good weapons on the outside, and he really trusts them. So you'll see him throw some balls up to some guys, and you go, well, he really wasn't open, but he's actually open. He, he's got a lot of confidence in his receivers, and he should. They got some good players. But him, uh, because he's the mobility factor, getting out of the pocket, on the move, you'll see some – You'll see some sprint out, play action, and then if he gets flushed out of the pocket, be able to make something happen with his feet. 
Coach, uh, he's also a guy who wants to run the football, as you mentioned there. Absolutely. 10 carries, 46 yards. But uh, Scotty Phillips was their big rusher last week for the Rebels. Uh, 40, uh, 26 carries for 143 yards yeah. and two touchdowns. I mean, he's going to be a beast to stop. They're going to run defense. the football. I, like I tell you, Rich wants to run the football. Uh, he think you know, you've always said you want to impose your will on your opponent, and there's no better way to do that than to run the football and be a physical football team. And I think they – this is a game for them to gear up to help them in the SEC and grow towards that too because that's a physical conference that you're going to have to learn to come off the football. So that's what we expect. We expect in a smash-mouth game from them, with, mixed in with the tempo and taking some shots down the field. Elijah Moore led the Rebels with seven catches on Saturday for 130 yards and also two scores, so he's a big play guy out there. Yeah, slow down yeah. As well. he's a good player, athletic. He's an NFL guy. Yeah. He's a guy that, uh, you know, we got to make sure we get some double coverage in on, help out. Swipe guys to play over the top of things like that. They'll they'll find him eventually. They're going to get something going with him, so they'll get some stuff going. But uh, I think we'll be able to. You know, we got to do everything that we can to keep him from having those big plays. That's going to be a big thing is not to give up the explosive plays. On defense, they switched their front right from last year. They did uh, to this season and what they're trying to run. They, they were went from a four down year, to a three down. Okay, yeah, they're it, three down this year. Yeah, yeah so uh, you'll see their two ends. I think or two outside linebackers. They're uh, those are the two guys I think that probably get him going along with the nose. He's, uh, I mean, number forty is a dynamic. I don't, I can't tell you his name. I'll know his name in the next yeah. year or two. But <laughs> believe me, he'll make sure I know his name. No doubt. Uh, but thirteen and ninety set. The two guys coming off the edge are really polished pass rushers, uh, athletic, move well long, and that's what they are defensively. The front seven is a extremely long group of guys. They'll they're going to look better than us out there in the uniform. We'll see if they play better than us, right? <laughs> And coach on the outside, they're gonna play a lot of man coverage against your wide receivers. They they do some, but not uh, that hadn't been their mo for the most part. They've uh, they're, they're more, a little more zone than I was expecting, but that has a lot to do with Memphis and Arkansas. Also, they could very well line up against us and play. We're gonna match heads with them and stop the run and see if y'all can beat us. That could easily happen to us. So you know, we'll just see how the chess match unfolds on game day. But uh, for us, it's to do what we do best: take care of the football. Don't give ourselves the unforced errors, and then let's see how things play out. And play hard. We're going to play hard, Robbie. We'll, no and then uh, our guys will play hard, and, and we'll see what things leave us at the end. Uh, you met with the media today. Coach Luke also met with the media today in Oxford. And he talked about the team speed you guys showed on video. Is that something that's triggering him? Is that something you guys really feel is an advantage for you guys, not just in this game, but as you go along in the south and you guys feel like you're a physical team but also a lot of team speed on the outside? Well, we want, I wanted to go that way. We didn't have that element last year. So the off season, we spent more of uh, our efforts – and our focus was more on speed and, and uh, increasing our speed and athleticism of our guys. So that's where we wanted to go, and that's where we're going to continue to go from a recruiting standpoint and then a development standpoint. We'll recruit them, get them in here as freshmen, and develop them all the way through, and they walk out of here with a championship ring and a degree. Well, Coach, we'll talk about Ole Miss before we wrap the show up one more time. Well, you're going to talk to the guy that knows more about Ole Miss than anybody here in a minute, right? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, Michael we'll find Spurlock. out in just a minute here. Yeah. Michael Spurlock will join us, oh, the yeah. Lions yeah. wide receiver coach. You take a break. Guy's a legend, He's man. a legend. People go kneel at the altar up is there. He Ar huh? Is he Archie legend or Michael Spurlock legend? He's Michael question. Spurlock legend. That's Don't it. go with Archie yet. But he's got a <laughs> statue up there. You just got to find it. Yeah. <laughs> it's on campus. You just got to find it. So you're telling folks to get there early and start looking get around Get there early, start looking them. around. He's got some autographed pictures of himself that he's handing out, and it's going to be awesome when he gets on campus. Well, you're setting him up when he gets up here. He'll he's be, excited. He'll be fine. Don't worry about <laughs> that now. He's going back to his neighborhood. He knows what's going on there. No doubt, no doubt. Coach Michael Spurlock, wide receiver coach for Southeastern, will join us after this time out. We'll come back to Topla Catering host tonight's show. For more of Inside Southeastern Football with head coach Frank Selfo, brought to you by our friends at Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction on the Southeastern Lions Radio Network. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Why do you support Southeastern Athletics? So Southeastern is where our family started. We uh, met my wife here, um, you know, met all our friends here, and now it's given us two beautiful children and 
Now it's part of our family. Welcome back. Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo here from Toklaw Catering. Happy to have you with us. It's brought to you this week by our friends at Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction. Our guest here at the podium, Coach Selfo, really teed you up for a pretty good one here. You better <laughs> deliver with this interview, Coach. But, oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, as Coach Selfo says, the, uh, the man of Ole Miss, Michael Spurlock, but you're a lion tonight and a lion on Saturday. So we're happy to have you. Oh, thank you all for having me. Uh, yes, a lion definitely. Uh, it's good to go back home, but – um, going to play a good Ole Miss football team and a lot of family coming to watch the Lions play. Now, you were a Ole Miss Rebel from 2002 to 2005, I believe, right? You were recruited, actually. You played for Coach Ogeron in your last yes. year. And then it was Coach uh, Cutcliffe, who's now at Duke, before that. So uh, you then on, went on to a nice career in the National Football League, now diving into coaching. You started coaching high school football in Mississippi, correct, right out of the NFL? Correct, at uh, Philadelphia High School. Okay. And then went to junior college after that. I uh, went to Oklahoma and then uh, did uh, my internship with the Dallas Cowboys. Went to UTSA. That's where I met Coach Selfo. Yeah. Um, I mean, he couldn't do anything. Every morning he had to look at my face. So <laughs> uh, we had great conversation and just talk ball. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's amazing. You know, they always say when you're working, um, it's an interview. And we just talked and talked right. about Jacksonville. I played in Jacksonville. And, you know, his experience is my experience as a player. And he always said, uh, you know, if I ever get the opportunity, I want to help you in this profession. And, you know, a lot of people say that, and you're like, okay, yeah, I hear you. But right. uh, so happened, you know, he ended up um, getting fired, and he called me. He was like, look, like, this happens. This is part of the business. But what I told you is true. I want to help you in the profession. And we ended up being together when this all kind of went down, and he was like, all right, you, you ready to come to Louisiana? Yeah. So this is the closest I've been home in a long, <laughs> long time. So I'm thankful to Coach Selfo and – uh, thank you, thankful to him in America yeah. um, being having the opportunity to come here and to be a Lion. Your experience in the NFL, you had a long, prosperous career. You really made your headlines in Tampa Bay on two different occasions, right? You, right. you left and came back. Uh, what do you give to these guys about just, just maybe life after football and then life in that NFL league if, you, if they're able to make it? Um, really, it's a lot got to go right. Uh, the ball has to bounce um, because, I mean, you look at my career – uh, I tell them nowhere in the world did I think I ever play um, in the National Football League. I was graduating to go get a job, and I just wanted to close that door. So I went uh, through my pro day, and like I said, uh, you know, sometimes relationships, um, you can either build relationships or you can burn bridges before you get there. So happened, Coach George Ryan knew a guy that was at uh, the Arizona Cardinals by the name of Kirby Wilson. Mm -hmm. He came and worked me out, and – you know, they end up signing me and the rest was history. But if I had been a butthole, um, like sometimes you, you can be, yeah. you know, and uh, Coach Argeron, he wouldn't have liked that. He wouldn't have made that call. And luckily he did. And, I mean, it was the best thing in the world for me. And uh, I just try to give them life experiences, you know. At some point this is going to end. 
Uh, I've been cut so many times. Uh, I mean, I tell GM, like, it ain't hard for me. Like, yeah. you're going to cut me today? Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just letting them know that it is life after football, um, and it's going to end for everybody. But each and every day that you go out there, because you never know when your number is going to be called to say, hey, this is over for you. Enjoy it. You know, yeah. for those two, two and a half hours when you walk through that gate, I tell them, we all got problems. When we walk through the gate, this is a, your piece of heaven. No problems. Go have fun and go be a kid and go play this game that, I mean, you. I played until I was like 31. Mm -hmm. So I was an adult, but I was a kid to 31. So, yeah. you know, go enjoy it, man. This game, whatever you give to it, it'll give back to you. Coach, uh, going back to Ole Miss, uh, have you ever coached in Vaughn Hemingway against the Rebels before in your career? Never. Um, this is going to be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's nothing like it's like playing your big brother. Yeah. Uh, now you're the so-called little brother, but going up, I uh, got a lot of friends over there, Matt Luke, Charles Clark, Coach McIntyre, Derek Nix, Tyrone Nix. I know all those guys, but there's nothing like going there and being able to compete against guys that you respect. And, uh, I mean, I think it's going to be a great experience for us as coaches, but also for our players to go play in a great atmosphere and yeah. uh, go play some good football. That it, you're playing in the NFL, so Saturdays are busy before you travel and being at home. Did you ever – how many times have you got to go back as a fan just to be in the crowd since, since you've uh, left? Um, I'm going to tell you a funny story. So I got cut from Chicago, and we were moving, and me and my wife were like, okay, we'll leave the next day. Well, we – for the last couple of years, we bought season tickets, but we never got to go. We had to give them away. Sure. They played Alabama that Saturday. Okay. We drove all through the night <laughs> to go watch uh, Ole Miss play Alabama. That was my first game because you see all the festivities and you're never a fan. You're always there um, as a player or, you know, you watch the game, but, you know, you got to walk through the Grove and right. do that. A lot of things went on that I never knew because you were there as a player. But, I mean, it's going to be a great atmosphere. And um, to be able to get, the, get our guys on that same stage and to compete, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome um, yeah. and it's going to be great to, great to watch. When, when people think of Ole Miss, they think of a few players who stood out over time. And Patrick Willis might be one of the ones people think about. And you played with him when you were at Ole Miss. Uh, uh, I played and, with a lot of really, really, really good players. Yeah. I got the opportunity to play with, uh, for three years, Eli Manning. Right. Uh, Patrick Willis, uh, Deuce McAllister, Romero Miller are good friends of mine. Uh, the list goes on and on. And, um, I mean, it's going to be good. A lot of great football players. They have a lot of great football players there now. Um, and it's going to be a great test for us. Coach, let's dive into your group of guys. And they really had a nice game against Jacksonville State. Stood out with some big-time performances. And I felt like it was maybe – how many guys caught passes against the uh, the Gamecocks on Thursday night? Uh, we don't we don't worry about how many guys catch passes. Okay, how many we, guys saw time? Like how many guys get on the field? Uh, everybody. Yeah. Everybody, you know. You got um, everybody a chance to it's get a, out there. It's a ginormous pie, and everybody gets to eat. Yeah. And, you know, if everybody do their job – then everybody gets to sit down at the table and eat. And that's our mentality. Uh, you know, before it's been, um, hey, let me make sure I get my numbers. This year more than any, and that's the um, type of team Coach Selfo wants to build is a family atmosphere, iron sharp as iron. Our guys, even though we weren't a big part in it, but blocking, right. catching a pass here and there. And I think it's going to continue to grow. I mean, Devontae had a great game. It right. was his game. The more that we do, okay, they go try to stop Devontae. Now it's our time. So uh, it, we don't really look at the stats at yeah. the end of the day. Uh, continue to look at the W's. If we continue to stack W's, the stats will take care of themselves. And uh, our guys this year, it's more of a family atmosphere. And, you know, guys are – they make our job easy because they're coaching each other. They're they're stressing each other. Hey, that's not how we do things. Uh, coach has a, a thing about um, celebrate the number. Days after days is zero. That means everybody did what they were supposed to up to that point. And um, it's just making our job easy to where, uh, you know, you guys got to see what we saw for a month. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were excited because y'all finally got to see what we knew we were capable of doing if we put our minds together and, uh, Unluckily, we didn't get to play our second game. And, you know, Coach always, you know, everybody say, well, you're better from first game to second game. Coach Self will say, no, go to the next play. We're better the next play. And that's just been our mentality. We, we didn't get to play. But for three days, we sharpened each other iron by, I mean, competing and just playing great football. Who's the leader in your wide receiver room right now? Who's that vo vocal voice that's been stepping up since the camp started to really say, hey, I'm going to be the leader of our group going into 2019? Well, I think it's been a couple of guys. Um, CJ is young, but he's the guy that he don't mind if he piss you off. 
Um, Jawan is probably our most talented guy. But what I love about C.J. Uh, Turner, he don't mind going toe-to-toe with Jawan to make Jawan go play. But I think Jawan has turned that corner to the point where, I mean, we're all in a group message, and he tells them, hey, we can't miss this. Um, our name shouldn't be on list, and he makes my job easy. I, the the room that I have, and I tell him, my wife and kids are here. Y'all are my babies, yeah. and our name shouldn't be on list. We shouldn't. That's that's other stuff that we don't need to worry about. And Jawan has really kind of turned that corner to the point where he's taken over that role to where he's more of a team guy, more of let me show you how to how it's done and. Uh, coaching, um, not only coaching the players, but also being able to look like, okay, coach, how can I get better at doing this? So I would say those two guys kind of have taken the reins to say, hey, this is where we're trying to go, and I'm going to help take us there. Coach, uh, you, you were a quarterback at Ole Miss and then played right. wide receiver, kick returner in the NFL. Uh, a unique challenge for you on this team for a lot of line fans is Lorenzo Nunez is fully going to wide receiver this year. He's tried to make that full switch, right. and he's gone from that. Have you? How much of has your experience in your career and how that happened to you helped – him and you work together to kind of get as good as he can for his senior year? Um, I think that uh, I, I don't know if I'm the biggest person on Lorenzo Nunez. I think we have a love-hate relationship because <laughs> I know how good he can be. Yeah. And like I told him, I'm like, you're in the room for good. Last year you were kind of half and half. Right. And uh, we, we bump heads constantly because – I want him, in order for us to go where we're trying to go, we're going to need Lorenzo Nunez. If at the quarterback position, at wide receiver, wherever, he's so capable of doing so many things. And I think he's slowly understanding, like, hey, I got to pull my weight. And uh, you're starting to see him step up and get some of what we saw last year with the LSU game. Sure. And, uh, I mean, he's a guy that I think that he could have a big game this week. Uh, somehow um, he's a guy that when the big stage and the lights come on, Somehow he shows up, and uh, I'm expecting him to do really well. So um, I, I give him a lot of stories, and, and they're truthful stories because, like I said, I've been cut so many times right. that, uh, you know, I can give you the conversation and how it goes, I mean, through the blueprint. So, yeah. Yeah, Coach, we appreciate you. No I problem. hope you enjoy your trip back to Von Hengway and bring back a W for the Lions on Saturday. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Coach Michael Spurlock, wide receivers coach for Southeastern. We'll come back to Topla Catering here in downtown Hammond for more of Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfa, brought to you by our friends at Louisiana's First Choice Auto Auction on the Southeastern Lions. Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are
Southeastern Football with Frank Shelfo. We're here at Topla Catering in downtown Hammond on a great Monday night talking about the Lions and the Ole Miss Rebels this Saturday in Oxford, Mississippi. Brought to you, this week's show brought to you each and every week by our friends at Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction. It's our pleasure to be joined by the CEO of the Child Advocacy Services, uh, Mr. Rob Carlisle. Rob, thanks for being hey, with Robin, us tonight. thanks and, for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So let's just uh, go right into it. Absolutely. Thank you. Talk about your organization and uh, and what you do for this this great community and, and your connection to Southeastern football. Well, I'm really honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Child Advocacy Services is celebrating 26 years this year. We huh. were born in Hammond, America, and now we're serving 10 parishes across Southeast Louisiana with a CASA program, uh, Court Appointed Special Advocates. We recruit citizens from the community to serve as voices for children navigating through the foster care system. Your group is, uh, anytime you're dealing with kids, I mean, it's just, it's, a, it's an incredible project. And uh, th there's got to be challenges about that each and every day. You, you've got to have a great staff that works with you to, to make that happen each and every week. Thank you. Yes, all the kids that we're serving are in the state's care. So what's been hard over the years is it's confidential and it's tough to talk about. And one thing that Coach has brought is an entire team of volunteers to help advocate and bring our voice to a different level. Right. Um, above being scared or it being confidential, it's been a great opportunity to open up the conversation about volunteering. Right, right. How, how did this start here in Hammond? How did this organization get started and how has it flourished? In the, you said 11 parishes now you guys are around? We're in 10 parishes. 10 parishes. We're okay. one of 17 CASA programs. And I can look around the audience and say it's like a family. It's yeah. like a small community. And uh, we're, we're being envied by all 17 CASA programs throughout the state of Louisiana Great. for the relationship Great. and the recognition that's coming to the table. Uh, it started out with a phone call. Coach Stelfo called us and said, I want our guys to be connected. And I asked so many people around town who was a great organization to go with, and he was introduced to us. Uh, consequently, I had three or four people that had introduced me to him. So it was gotcha. like Perfect. small community yeah. come to town, but it really was a great fit last year. Coach, can you, you speak about this organization and what it not mean, only means to you, but your team and just. Well, uh, you, you know, it means so much to the area. I yeah. mean, that's, they serve in this entire area and it's sometimes it's just heartbreaking. But where it really comes into play for my guys is that they, they realize how fortunate they are. Sometimes we go through so many situations and it's woe is me. And then when they see somebody else, they don't realize, wow, I really got it good. And some of these kids are going through so much. And then when you watch the joy in our kids' eyes, I know Rob says that the organization gets so much from us. We get so much more from them. When those kids come out to practice, they're out there running, <laughs> throwing footballs and just laughing yeah. and having a good time. It's hilarious. Uh, some of them are pretty good, too, and I'm, I, they're not illegal recruits. <laughs> I'm going to be able to go get them later <laughs> on, but I, I, I wrote some names down already, 10-, 11-year-olds that are pretty doggone good already. Yeah. So, when, you know, when we get those kids running around out there and you see them, and I ask our players, I said, if you could sit – I asked Chase, and I said, if you could sit next to anybody – and, and eat dinner with him, who would you want to sit next to in the NFL? He said, Peyton Manning. And I said, what would you do with it? He said, man, I'd just stare at him. And I said, well, that's what that kid's doing with you. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an absolute win-win situation for us. But our guys really uh, – we had our first dinner last night, and Hayward, the dog the, – uh, I shouldn't say the dog, but he's a dog. I mean, yeah. I don't know what you say, yeah. but it's a dog. And uh, he was there with Laurie, and uh, they came over. And I don't know, it's just – it's a cool deal. Our kids are very comfortable. Our players are very comfortable now, and we're looking forward to this thing growing. We're just bringing yeah. more awareness to the program because they need it financially. They need more volunteers in the program. They need help. And all these kids are uh, – these are local kids. These are kids that grew up in our area that we got a chance to help. Rob. Robbie, I'll tell, yeah, you, go ahead. I'll tell you a quick story. And Coach Selfo may not even have heard this story yet. Uh, one day at one of the dinners, there are so many pieces to this puzzle, whether it's the CASA symbol at the concession stand, whether it's – a child coming up and feeling that turf for the first time that could be exposing them to something larger in life than what they've been exposed to. Um, at one of these dinners on a Sunday night, one of the children was standing in line waiting on getting dinner, um, who we invited to come have dinner with all the players. One of the players said, no, what are you doing? You're a VIP. You go to the front of the line. No doubt. That made a life change in that one remark to that child that has not only motivated the child that was there, but our entire staff at work. It's been 
fantastic yeah. and just an honor to be a part of. It's family. And family. It seems like it's all coming together. Um, how can people help your group uh, more than more than any, anything? Really? Well, the biggest thing, it's not easy to talk about, and I think Coach said a great, he did a great job by saying, it's not an easy thing to talk about. Abuse and neglect yeah. is a part of us. So the more that we welcome and, and consider the idea of spending an hour a month or becoming a volunteer, if it's a, a, a mission in your heart, in your soul, and an interest, we can help guide people to find how to do that, and that's what we're there for. We know that it's better to serve children in the system by community and citizens more than it is for our state to do it and the resources that it pulls and drains from our state to do it. So if we can do it with a community volunteer involved, let's do it. Yeah. Well, we've been doing the raffle this week, Coach, and this week our raffle item is going to be a shirt, and it's going to be the Frank Selva shirt, and it's going to be a benefit. Coach, talk yeah. about that. That's a pretty good-looking look for you. What do you think? Colton, you getting there? <laughs> We've got a raffle tonight, and that benefits uh, this organization, uh, uh, Coach. Uh, well, what we're going to do, we're gonna, I don't know how many of those will sell. I can tell you that. <laughs> I don't know. But whatever, all the profits and proceeds from the sale of any of these shirts are going to go to CASA. Thank you. Yeah. And if you want to get Coach to sign the T-shirt and like that after that, that would be great. Uh, for, for anybody at home, we have a bunch of different sizes, so we'll, we'll do that raffle here tonight as well. So, so yeah, Thank just you. another yeah. way to raise, raise awareness, Absolutely. money, financially, everything. Great organization, services, everybody, man. Rob, thank you thank so you. much for, for coming thank on. You, really appreciate it. Rob Carlisle is the CEO of Child Advocacy Services, a, a great, great group that is uh, working with Southeastern football and making this community better each and every day. Thank Thanks you. so much for being We're with us. We're honored to be Absolutely. here. Thank you. We'll thank take you, a Coach. We'll take thank a time out. We're going to come back. Coach Selfo and I will give our final thoughts about Ole Miss at this time out on the Southeastern Lions Radio Network Inside Southeast Football with Frank Selfo. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student-athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Hey, welcome back to Toe Clock Catering here in Hammond, Louisiana, another edition of Inside South Asian Football this with Frank Selfo. This out of control, Rob. You've got to calm yeah, them down. Yeah, this group's getting out of control, man. Well, it's they have played, haven't had a game last week, so they're getting rowdy. They they're a little bit, a bit antsy right now. That's good, though. That's good. 
Coach, let's go ahead and do our drawing right now. Yeah, we're going to let uh, Rob. Yeah, draw. Rob's going to come in and draw. Cup. So if you yeah, see we've got the Casa Cup and yeah. everything else. See his so hand coming here. Down to Rob. There, Rob. there he is. Whoever you pick, and make Coach, happy. you can tell us who our winner is. Notice that you made everybody else mad. Oh, okay. Coach, we got two. Well, he picked two. All right. That's awesome. Nice job there, Rob. Well, it's Donald and Kathy Myers. There you go. They folded them up together. Good job. So we got some shirts for you again. These shirts are the Frank Selfo t shirts. We want to get Coach's face up there one more time. All proceeds from the T-shirts go to Casa. They'll be uh, being sold as the year goes on, and we'll be giving those shirts out here tonight as our raffle drawing. That's probably a good way to start doing it from now on is just put two of them together, and then Rob will pick them both out. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so two shirts will be given out tonight and a great cause. Again, we thank Rob yeah. for coming up and joining us here on the show tonight Absolutely. and talking about that great organization. Well, Coach, uh, your final thoughts, wrap it up. we got a few minutes left here about the Ole Miss Rebels. You guys are going to travel on Friday to Memphis and then head down to Oxford. It's about you know 45 minutes or so down to Oxford from Memphis uh, to get ready for this game Saturday against the Rebels. Yeah, we'll stay in Memphis. Uh, for, we'll practice Friday morning and then uh, eat lunch uh, right there in the UC. Food's great. Uh, Mason does a, Mason does a super job for us. And then uh, we'll load up on the buses, head on up to Memphis, spend a the night there, wake up the next day, have a little uh, early morning continental breakfast, have a pregame meal about 11, then head down to Ole Miss to Oxford, play the game, 301 kickoff. Looking forward to it. It's a, it's an opportunity. You know, you get 12 chances in a season. We lost one last week because of the weather, but uh, we've got nine more now, and I mean ten more, and this is the next one. So it's really important for us to do well and take advantage of the opportunity that when we have them. Coach, it's time for our Ask the Coach segment really quickly here. we got a couple that came in here uh, via linesports.net. You can submit your questions each and every week through the Internet site, or you can post them uh, through the Southeastern Sports Network. A live stream. This is uh, this is David from Hammond, Louisiana. Uh, Coach said, "Does last year's game in LSU help you at all with the environment on Saturday in, in Oxford?" Well, I think anytime you experience it, it does. You, as long as you grow from it, you know. As long as you don't look at it and say it was a novelty and I'll never have to use it again. I think any of life's experiences are like that. So when you go through things and it's and we talk to our guys all the time, you're gonna. It might be a test. It, it might be a, a situation at home with your family. Any of those tough situations that you go through. Uh, or even uh, the, the nice ones, uh, weddings, uh, anniversaries, birthdays. Remember them, experience them, remember them, cherish them, uh, and then follow them in the back so that the next time, if you ever have to draw from it, you can. So the guys that played there last year, yes, it definitely will help. The ones that didn't, they'll be wide-eyed for a little bit. But I think now we've got a little more experience on our team and maturity where – uh, the guys who are going to be able to impart a little bit of wisdom on some of those other guys. Coach, a couple of minutes left. So we'll answer this one quickly for uh, this is Philip, and he's from Hammond as well. And he asked, Coach, uh, how will special teams play a role in the game on Saturday against the Rebels? It's going to be a big role. Yeah, it does every week, though. That's, it's not going to be something new. But uh, our guys are going to have to come through for us, and I think they will. Feel good about them. They had a good week of practice uh, last week, and then they'll have another – I expect another good week this week. So it's going to play a big role. Somebody's going to have to take advantage of a turnover – Big return, field position, things like that. Austin Dunlap, three punts inside the 20 last week. Let's do it again this week. Coach, it's been a pleasure filling in this week and good to sit with you as we get Much ready. better than Alan. Just uh, I appreciate that. Yep, yep. It's, it's yep. It's I see on, you, Alan. It's I on know. TV. You know? I know. It's good, Alan. There you go. Well, uh, well, he's be, not watching it right now. Alan will be back next that. week. So, I know. Uh, I know Alan will be back. Uh, but if he'll he wants take a to shot come back, me, it's always good right. to sit with you. Well, so I'll, I'll try. we got room for three. No I doubt. No doubt. The game is a 3 o'clock kickoff, actually 301 in Oxford, Mississippi. It's on the SEC Network Alternative Channel. And always, you can watch it all along the line or listen to it all along the Lions Radio Network affiliates all through the region. We'll be at 2.30 airtime here on the network for kickoff at 3.01 in, in Oxford. Make the trip up. About four hours up there. Great venue for Lion fans to make the trip up there. It's a 3 o'clock kickoff, so it'll be hot. Bring your sunscreen, but we should have a good football yeah, game. Yeah, let's represent us, man. I think it'd be great to have some green and gold in the stands no with doubt. those guys. Yep. For Coach Selfo, I'm Robbie Rhodes sitting in for Alan Waddell. This has been Inside South East Football with Frank Selfo. It's brought to you by our friends at Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and our host, as always, Toe Block Catering. We'll see you. Uh, they'll be back next week, Alan and Coach. That'll be a 7 o'clock show next Monday night to get ready for conference play, and we'll see you from Vaughn Hemingway. We would be with you from Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford on Saturday, 2.30 airtime on the network, 3.01 kickoff against the Old Miss Rebels. Line up, everybody. See you then. Let's go. Network are a product of Lion Sport Properties. For more information on how you can All support right, future broadcasts, Lion Sport Properties is available at area code 985 549 2570.